Archibald Hector was the senior grave digger in Brickham Cemetery and a cheating bastard of a man who haunted his wife Glenda till the day she died. They lived in a little square of a house right across the street from the church run by Lida Ambrose. This worked well for Archie as he didn't have to walk too far to go to work since the cemetery was right behind the church. It was just Glenda, Hector and a little girl she had adopted. The little girl's mother was one of those women who wasn't ready for mothering but didn't realize that till the child was born. Maureen, leave the child with me. I will take care of she. You sure, Auntie? The tears in her eyes were like boulders. But she wasn't even looking at the baby when she asked Glenda the question and was already stretching out her hands to give up the child. Yes, child. It's better you leave she here with me than have she all over the place behind you. Glenda took the baby. The next week, they found the child's mother dead, stiff like a board wrapped up in a white cloth covered in candle wax in the middle of the cemetery. So from then until Glenda died last week, she took care of the child, whom she called Bernadette. Glenda was an old mother in the church and spent most of her time there and used to take Bernadette to everything the church had. Every service, thanksgiving, baptism, mourning, everything, everything, everything. Whenever and wherever you saw Glenda, you saw Bernadette. Archie used to call them church mouse and church rat. Always want to poke fun, he once told Bernadette, Don't worry, Nettie. When you come big woman, you could be rat just like Glenda. Bernadette had looked at him, blinked, and whispered under her breath. Now, saying that it was hot the day they buried Glenda wasn't enough to describe the weather. It was as if hell had sprung up in Brick Camp, which surprised everyone because they knew Glenda as a good, honest, church-going woman who for all the years that she was married to Archie and all the horny horn she, she never once showed anger, animosity, or wickedness. She used to wash, cook, and clean the same way as if he was the most faithful and honorable man ever. So it was strange that it was in sweltering heat in the cemetery behind the church across the road from her house that neighbors, friends, Archibald, and Bernadette had to stand up in to bury her. Bernadette swayed. The layers of cloth that made up her spiritual gown grew heavy. The broad head tie on her head trapped the heat, making her feel as if someone was holding a flambeau to her skull. She blinked, wincing when drops of sweat dripped into her eyes. She reached down to grab her apron, but Sister Agnes stretched over and handed her a towel. You come out in all this heat without a towel, child? Bernadette accepted the towel and wiped her face, beseeching the Lord to send a cloud and spare them from the heat. She reached over to Agnes to return the towel and almost kilkete into the hole meant for Glenda. Hot hands, sweaty hands, and hands that were oddly cold and clammy grabbed at her wrist. Sister Nettie, you okay? Bernadette stared at Agnes, but instead of Agnes, she saw Glenda. She closed her eyes and shook her head. When she opened them again, it was just Agnes and Shepherd Thomas' faces filling her vision. Thanks. Ah, okay. Their hot hands receded. She pushed at where the cold hands were still on her skin, but touched only her arm. When the funeral ended, Bernadette stayed long after everyone had left, looking at the grave and whispering. When it was a little bit before six, she turned to leave the cemetery, Bible in one hand and a little black pouch in the other. She walked past the flambeau that had been lit, meant to lead Glenda's spirit home. When she reached the house, a tinkling laugh sailed out from behind the curtain, through the door, through the open front door. She dropped the black pouch in her apron into her apron pocket and reached for the little bag of salt in there. Pulling back the curtain, she was just about to turn around to back into the house when she saw the shoes just outside the front door. The tinkling laugh drew her eyes to the couch where Archie sat wrapped, with the shoes, wrapped up with the shoes owner. He was in the same clothes he wore to the funeral. Bernadette blinked. Glenda had never let him in the house with his graveyard clothes. Ever. Even the boots he used when digging graves, she made him leave outside. She used to say if dead man is to stand up in them boots, they will stand up on them outside. Archie used to laugh at her. All the church people does not tired with this jumpy nonsense. But he had never gone against her word. He could have played all the old mass he wanted to, but outside. The inside of the house was hers. 
Bernadette dropped the salt back into her pocket and stepped face first into the room. She looked at the woman. Don't let night come and meet them shoes stand up outside there. The woman twisted her mouth and Archie laughed. Has one gone, another one born, eh? Bernadette shrugged. Well, all the big and have all your sense. She walked straight up through the, the house with her shoes on, tracking cemetery dirt across the living room floor. At her door, she bent over, took off her shoes, grabbed the salt from her pocket and spread a line across her doorway, straightened up, threw a bit of it over her shoulder, spun around and back in, backed into her room, leaving her shoes just outside her bedroom door. The evening wore on and the woman stayed with Archie in Glenda and his room. Around two in the morning, Bernadette heard her creeping across the living room. She got up just in time to see the woman walking barefoot through the cemetery dirt on the floor and Glenda in Bernadette's shoes trailing behind her on her way to the door. A deep gangrenous colored darkness surrounded Glenda. Bernadette sniffed at the square camphor in her hand and watched as the woman eased the door open and started to slide her dirty feet into the shoes. Remembering the words Glenda had taught her to use in these moments, she whispered them into the camphor and watched as Madame La slipped, as Madame La and Glenda slipped into her shoes. Breeze that had avoided them all day suddenly showed up, shifting the curtain, allowing Bernadette to see Glenda slide up the woman's back and shuffle into place on her shoulders. The woman hunched over under the weight of Glenda's throat, but she couldn't utter a sound. Glenda hitched her ankles under her armpits and put her hands over the woman's mouth. Bernadette whispered into the camphor and watched as, as Glenda turned the woman to face the side of her house. Pulling back on her head and gave her a swift kick under her ribs, the woman shot off like a derby horse running along the outside of the house. When they made it to the side of the house where Mr. Norris's potthongs were, the dog started barking, running, chasing after Glenda, sitting on the shoulders of this young woman, riding her around the house like Juve Jackass. Bernadette stood in her bedroom doorway, listening to the songs of the dogs and the muffled cries coming from the woman. She looked in the direction of Glenda's bedroom. Silent. Another gust of wind pushed out into the room. The edge of the curtain touched the ceiling. Glenda and the woman went past the door just as Archie's spirit floated into the room with a stupid look on his face. Bernadette folded her arms over her chest and leaned into the door jam. She wasn't afraid, and Glenda, she and Glenda had done too much spirit work for her to still be scared. It's what I have to afraid. The amount of lies me and Glenda. The noise from the dogs pulled her back to the moment. Grabbing the cookie a broom, she swept every speck of the cemetery dust up, dirt outside, covered the front threshold in salt, then got the things she needed. She returned to the darkness of the doorway just as the gang broke the corner and came into view. The woman was dripping with sweat. She looked tired, bent and worn. But Glenda? Glenda looked young and fresh. The skin of her lips had been pulled back. The skin of her lips that had been pulled back were now full. Her hair was blowing in the wind, her eyes and teeth white against her dark skin, her hips moving back and forth like children riding horse. Her face looked as it did before Archie cheated on her that first time, before the young woman in question showed up at her door, baby in hand, thinking Glenda was stupid enough not to know, back before she covered herself in clot, dirty spirit work and shame. Bernadette stood in the doorway, a calabash of water in hand, exora flowers floating across the top. The other was filled with mixed grain and a bottle of Kananga water under her armpit. Whispering to the wind, she took aim and pitched the water on the woman as Glenda drove her past the doorway. The holy water hit Glenda squarely, causing the, causing the color behind her smile to change from blue to sickly yellow and her body to emanate the same heat from earlier that day. The smell of the wet skin on the woman's back being singed touched Bernadette's nostrils. Her steps slowed. Her face covered in a mix of holy water, sweat and tears twisted. Glenda looked at Bernadette. The coldness in her eyes made its way through Bernadette's blood. She dared not step outside. As they disappeared around the house, she marveled at the fact that not one person had lit a light or pulled a curtain. When they came around again, Bernadette dispensed with a handful of mixed grain in her palm. Glenda reared up and back, pulling at the woman's head, digging her fingers into the flesh of her cheeks, lifting her face up to the skies, forcing the woman to stop under the mango tree. There they stood. Both their mouths open, eyes closed, face contorted, screaming silently to the heavens. Glenda lowered her eyes and looked at Bernadette. Her face looked swollen again. The black-green skin stretched over it so tightly it shone. Just one more lap and I were done. Just one more. Bernadette knew it wasn't really a request. 
but she nodded anyway and so as slow as it was glenda took the woman around the house once more the woman's feet dragged through the hard naked red dirt and the shoes had begun to fray at the top face to face again bernadette bestowed the kananga water and glenda slid off the woman's back and went in the direction of the cemetery dragging archie's spirit with her the dogs barked after them as the woman kept walking she made another full round of the house before turning up in front of Bernadette, head down, back bowed. What up? The woman cried out as Bernadette hit her with the cookie broom. She looked up at Bernadette, who paused and shifted her gaze in the direction of Glenda had gone. When she looked back, the woman's head went down in silent acquiescence. She hit her a second and third time, then dropped the broom inside the door. Just before she closed the door in the woman's face, she whispered, Make it home safe, eh? And this time, make sure and put your shoes them inside.